Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to Carnage Week, and today we're going to talk about the introduction of Carnage 2099 in a series called Spider-Man 2099 Dark Genesis. And this is by Steve Orlando, who wrote it, Justin Mason, who was the artist, and then you had two different inkers on the book, or colorists on the book, I mean. Um, you had Jordan Boyd and Antonio Fabella, and those are the two colorists that did the book. I think uh, Jordan did the first three issues, and Antonio did the last two issues. And we'll get into that. I do have a comment about their work. and uh, But, it, you know, just my opinion, it is a little bit critical. Uh, so just be prepared that I ultimately just didn't like this series. Uh, you know, Steve Orlando is very hit or miss for me. And one of the things that I feel I'm the most criticism I could probably give Steve Orlando when he does a book like this, like when he does a book like Midnighter or does something like that, I think he's, he's really good. Like when he gets a story where it's more focused and there's less characters, He's really, really good at it, I feel. And then he can pepper in cameos from time to time. But when he's got a beginning, middle, and end story idea focused in his head, he delivers really well. This is not focused. This is one of those ideas that I feel like he has sometimes where he's like, I want to put my stamp on this and this and this. So he's doing his version of Blade, which is a neat version of Blade. But Blade doesn't get enough real screen time or page count for the emotional weight that Steve's trying to deliver with that character. It doesn't really resonate at all. Um, Moon Knight gets a 2099 version in this book. Also, very hollow um, appearance. Like, you know, like, I'm like, okay, that's an interesting concept. You know, what's going on? There, this Moon Knight actually lives on the moon, <laughs> you know, which is really cool. And they come down to Earth, you know, during like a really, you know, much needed you know, events like this one. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. But then that kind of falls away and they and everyone just becomes like random heroes to be thrown into the mix and then some of them like are battling inner demons so then they become part of the problem at points when steve just wants tension for no reason and you're just like oh my god like it, like nothing really and i'll get into more detail right now i'm just kind of venting um and we are going to get into spoilers so if you don't want spoilers for this you want to go read it for yourself which i do encourage you to do regardless of how i feel about anything uh you know support comic books and go buy these and i think the trade will probably come out soon but the single issues i think you can still find out there so check it out for yourself and let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll keep talking down there whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Um, but in this one, like I said, you got Moon Knight set up, you got Venom, Aaliyah Bell, which is like the newer uh, Venom that you know, Steve Orlando kind of created when he did his Exodus story and some of the other crossovers he did with Spider-Man 2099. And I kind of don't like that Steve has become the default 2099 writer because I don't think he's done a lot of great stuff during his run. Like he did that whole Norman Osborn thing with the black cards and all that stuff in the last one. And that sets up this storyline, sure. But none of it, like, I feel like there's these neat ideas here. But then none, none of them can be focused on because he has to introduce Blade. And he has to introduce Moon Knight. And he has to bring in Daredevil, you know, who apparently retired but is now back. Um, then he has to bring Punisher back, who apparently died but gets a new robot body in this one. And then he shows up to, you know, to fight and help the good guys. But then he turns on the good guys because you just, they needed another battle scene. And that's really what this felt like was, okay, we got this kind of interesting concept, but then we're going to just throw it away so we can just have people fight each other. And I'm sorry, but the, the art, that brings me to the art. I don't feel like the art is strong enough to do that with. Like, you know, this artwork is okay, but it's not, in my opinion, great. It, it's not someone who should be doing a bunch of fight sequences because I don't think their art is is good during the fight sequences. Um, and then also the setup for this carnage. It's like, all right, you have this guy. He's a rich guy. His house is being invaded. He was in, you know, working for this group, and he was able to steal the carnage symbiote that they're working on. He was working for Alchemex, and he took the carnage symbiote and brought it home with him. And then when he was getting invaded, he's like, you know, the house is getting invaded and people are going to kill him. He decides, you know, because there's essentially like a purge thing going on. It's like there's different tiers of class in the future. Like they're, you know, rich people, you know, poor people, middle class, that kind of stuff. But it's by card. So you have aluminum, which is like poor people, I guess. And then you have um, gold card, which is a slight, you know, like a middle class, low middle class. Then you have platinum, then platinum plus, and then black cards. And black cards are the richest of the rich. So at this point in the story, aluminum people, after Norman Osborn and everyone was taken down, People with aluminum cards are starting to rise up and try to kill people. Like some of the extremist ones are trying to kill the one percenters or the black cards. So they're invading their houses, kind of purge style, like I said, and they're and they're wanting to, you know, they're out for blood. And that's where the story starts. And you're like, okay, so that, that's an immediate setup for something. And then immediately going into like random ramifications of it and then introducing carnage. Like it's so haphazard 
and just boom, we got to get to it. We got to get to it. That it nothing takes its time, and because nothing takes its time, some of these actual genuine good ideas that Steve Orlando has, they don't flesh out at all. Like this would have been a cool series if you did. Okay, we're gonna do Carnage, and we're gonna do a four issue series, or or maybe even five issues. Fine, but don't do Moon Knight, Daredevil, Punisher, and Blade all in it and Ghost Rider, just do like one or two. So that way those characters can really get their moment. And plus he also has a new Spider-Woman that's an alien that was introduced in the last series. She has a big part in this. And again, she everyone just feels like they're there to give one conversation to someone to get them to either join the fight or not join the fight or fight each other. And then they move on. And then everyone after that just becomes hero number one punches bad guy number two. And then hero number three punches bad guy number four. And that's all it is. That's what the book becomes. It's like toys being mashed together with no point. You know, I mean, there's a premise, I guess, that they have to stop Carnage. But man, do they drag that out. I mean, there, there's like a whole issue and a half where Spider-Man's trying to lure Carnage to a secret place so Ghost Rider can get the one up on him. And then they do that and Carnage gets away, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, and they don't show it. It happens off page. So it's like uh, so there's there's so much story Steve is trying to squeeze into this that he can't even get it all on the page. And that's when you just have to learn to self-edit yourself and get some of those out and save them for another story. Um, because this introducing Carnage and he's just like a random creature. And this is my thing. We talk about this sometimes too. Like you get artists. So there are some artists that like work at these companies, Marvel and DC, and their job is to design, you know, because maybe they have a design background. So they're like, okay, you're going to design Carnage 2099 and you're going to design Moon Knight 2099 and blah, blah, blah. I don't know who did the designs of a lot of these characters, but I don't feel like they're very good. And just in my personal opinion, um, Carnage is kind of a dinosaur looking Stegosaurus monster. Um, he's red ish, but black also. Um, it's not the same Carnage, obviously. It's made from the Venom symbiote that Aaliyah Bell has. So it's a little different. It could be a new offspring, but then at one point it references that it knows its past or at least a version of it. So I don't know. It, it's kind of all over the place, but. Anyway, this guy, Eric, he is a one percenter. His house is getting invaded and he becomes a new carnage. And meanwhile, there's a board of Alchemex and they want to get involved and they want to stop this. And immediately carnage is like getting people to side with them. He went down to the extremists who are, you know, rioting and stuff around the city. And he's like, hey, I'll be your leader. You know, like I want the blood of the black cards too. Meanwhile, he is a black card, the guy who bonded with carnage, but carnage eats away that guy. So really the identity of Eric, his identity is... By the end of issue one, he's gone. And you just have this monster that's running around killing um, and people siding with it. And I don't know. And then like then these Alchemex guys decide, hey, let's also raise the price. Like every hospital in this area, it's in a poor neighborhoods where these riots are happening. We're going to have you have to have a, an aluminum card to get into all of them. That's the base minimum to get into a hospital to get, you know, medical care or something. But with Carnage out there tearing people up in these poor neighborhoods, let's change it. And within like seconds, they turn all those hospitals into Platinum Plus members only. So anyone who's getting wounded and stuff by Carnage and during those riots can't get any medical help. And I'm like, okay, that's an interesting idea, but it has to happen so fast that it literally gets done in one page. And you're like, you, this needs, some of this could flesh out and be, an, can actually be an interesting story. And it's not, it's, it's all for the sake of just getting more stuff crammed in. And it's like, ah. Uh, so then finally, Carnage, at the end of the first issue, he gets a taste of Spider-Man's blood. Miguel, obviously, he's not so much a jokester. He makes a joke here and there, but he's not like other Spider-Man. He's more serious. He shows up more like Batman with Lila, his hologram, and they're trying to solve scene, you know, crime scene and stuff. And, you know, so he gets clipped and Carnage tastes his blood and finds out that it's mutated blood because Miguel spliced his DNA with a spider DNA, obviously, and he became a different type of Spider-Man. So Carnage likes to taste that blood um, and then is like, all right, that's what I want. So for the whole rest of the series is just, you know, Carnage out to get Miguel. But there's so many times where they're right there in front of each other and they don't do it. Like they don't uh, just continue the fight. And the way Venom gets involved is her dad was one of the cops that got wounded during the battle and he couldn't go to a hospital. So he shows up at home and she uses the symbiote to heal him. And then she goes out and joins the fight as Venom. And that's pretty much like that's the setup for the book. And I don't want to get into every single spoiler, but I don't know. It's it's not good. Like this book, I don't feel like is a very good book. Um, like I said, Punisher shows up. Blade is an interesting concept. You find out that he was raised by the original Blade. 
um, who ended up living a very, very long time because he's half vampire. Uh, so he was raised by that blade. But this blade is a zombie. So he has a hunger for human flesh that he's trying to stave off. And then meanwhile, you have Carnage building a surrogate family like he does um, in the modern stuff. And he gets this guy named Flipside uh, 3.0 is on his side, although Blade makes a short work of him in that scene. And then Halloween Jack, who is, I think it was an X-Men 2099 uh, villain at one point, uh, who teams up with Carnage. And you find out that he was one of the, these guys that like helped Carnage, you know, get made and break out or whatever. So, and then at the end, it just becomes this battle where you have all the symbiotes fighting each other. Uh, you're not the symbiotes. Yeah, you have Venom and Carnage fighting each other. You have Venom and Spider-Man teaming up to fight, you know, uh, Flipside. You have Flipside fighting Blade and getting destroyed. You have Halloween Jack being there, you know, fighting uh, the Spider-Woman and Moon Knight. Then you have the, finally, they lure, after four issues of setting it up, they finally lure Carnage into this death trap with Ghost Rider and then Ghost Rider like sets the room on fire and ignites it all. But then you're like, well, what happened? It just cuts. Like they, they're fighting and you see that Carnage is like, yeah, I can make this whole place crumble and ruin your whole plan to burn me. And then you don't see what happens after that. And then you just cut to Miguel and Lila. And then Ghost Rider shows up and he's like, hey, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't contain him. So you, he's out there somewhere. You got to go stop him now. And it's like, well, that's good. You know, you don't want Miguel. You want him to be the one to take down Carnage. But it's just, like I said, everything's so haphazard. They had this big plan. It doesn't go well. But I do sometimes like that in stories where they're like, this is the thing that'll stop the bad guy. And then that thing doesn't work. And it's like, okay, now what are we going to do? But they don't really do anything clever after this. Uh, they really don't. Uh, and then for some reason, they set up Daredevil, like coming in at the end of the book. And really, he only shows up to stop Punisher. And that's all he really does. He doesn't really contribute that much to the fight against carnage or anything and and that's where I, I like i said this gets bloated you have so many characters at the end that you're not really focusing on the main story and then when you get to the main story where it's like miguel and spider woman and venom trying to fight carnage it's not as exciting because you 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 they keep jumping back to these other things that aren't adding anything to the story you're just it's like oh we got to wrap up this fight and oh we got to have this moment or we, and it's like cut some of this man like learn how to self-edit and cut some of this out and focus your story. This is a lot like that first Lethal Protector book that Michelini put out, uh, you know, like a year or two ago, where it was just like villains, 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 villains. And you're like, okay, but what's the point? Like, what's, you know, why is all this happening? And that's kind of how I felt while reading this. So, you know, it's, you know, it's not a terrible, terrible book. It's just one I have a lot of criticism of. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad I bought it. I love collecting Spider-Man 2099 stuff. But I also, the main reason I wanted this in my collection was because Moon Knight is in it, 299 Moon Knight, and it's it's our intro into that character. And even though I felt like that character was very hollow and bland in this, hopefully uh, a, another writer, or maybe a stronger writer, will flesh that version of Moon Knight out in a story in the future, I hope. Um, and then also Ghost Rider. I collect everything with Ghost Rider in it, and Ghost Rider 2099 is in this book, so that was the other reason I bought it. But, uh, but I wasn't really happy with either one of their appearances, although the Ghost Rider one started off good and then it just kind of fizzled out. So for me, this book was just meh. And, uh, and Carnage, the, this take on Carnage, wasn't very cool or memorable. And there, he does die at the end. You know, the, uh, Venom grabs Carnage and jumps into a fire together. And you think they both die, but you find out that Venom does live. Spoiler. Uh, Venom does live, but Carnage apparently didn't. So I don't know. That's just... It was very meh, this whole book, and, and it didn't get me excited and didn't make me want to read anything else that Steve Orlando does set in the 2099 universe. I already felt that way after Exodus and some of the other stuff he did with 2099. I already didn't like those, but this one I liked the least. I feel like they got worse. And so for me, at the end of this book, he puts like, you know, that Marvel universe, you know, when the Marvel movies do this, they go, Miguel O'Hara will return. You know, they're like, Star-Lord will return, or whatever they put in at the end of the movies. They, they do that in this, and I'm like, well... That's good, but I just I hope Steve Orlando doesn't write it after reading this. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want to read it. I do know the next Miguel story we're gonna get is Symbiote Spider Man, and it's Peter David, who was the original writer of Spider Man twenty ninety nine and the co creator of him with Rick Leonardi. So I do know that Peter David's coming back and he's gonna add another chapter of his Symbiote Spider Man, you know, storyline that he's doing where he fits stuff into continuity, but this time he's going to the twenty ninety nine universe and he's gonna write a story where Miguel bonds to Venom after it left Cron Stone who was the original host of the Venom symbiote, who also 
killed Jake Gallows, who becomes Punisher 2099, and yet there's no really cool moment in this book because Venom the suit, who was bonded to Cronstone and had his memories, does see Punisher 2099, and there's no interaction there. I guess there wouldn't be because there's no Cron, but still, I felt like you could have had some fun moment there with you know Venom saying something to Punisher to you know to hint at that that um, history together. But whatever, it, it that wasn't a deal breaker to me. It was just something I you know you could have thrown in there. But this book was just mediocre at best, and uh, but I still feel like that's just my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours. So if you have read this and you feel differently, whether you think it's better than I said or worse than I said or think it's exactly what I said, whatever it is, let me know down below and we'll keep talking down there. So uh, thank you for watching the show. I'm glad I was able to get through this because this felt like homework to me. I even took notes <laughs> in front of me. I had some notes on here, but even most of the notes I didn't read because I I'm just not excited over this one. And uh, and if you know when Peter David comes in though and writes the next symbiote Spider-Man story with Miguel and he does that, I'll definitely review that on this channel though, and hopefully I'll be more excited about it than I was of this book. But Peter David's symbiote Spider-Man stuff has been amazing, and we do have a couple more of those we got to talk about. So when that series starts coming out. We'll catch up on those symbiote Spider-Mans that we haven't done so far on this show, and we'll lead into the new series when that drops. So, yeah, again, let me know your thoughts down below. We'll keep talking down there. I've talked long enough on this. So thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and more Carnage Week coming up very soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.